Hello everyone, Sir Gantelot here. Today I'd like to talk about Microsoft Project and specifically how we can add graphical indicators to our Gantt charts to make them easier to read. This presentation is part of a series on YouTube where I aim to provide you with tools, techniques, tips and tricks for slaying those project management monsters that plague us on a daily basis. MONSTER is my acronym for Management, Organization, Network, Scheduling and Tracking Error. So without further ado, what I'd like to do is to go into Microsoft Project here and look at a schedule which is fairly typical of those that you'll see in organizations. This project is being well managed. It's been baselined. We're tracking progress against the baseline. And you'll see on the right the unfortunate result of all that good work. We end up with something that can be rather difficult to interpret. All these lines and bars here convey very good information, but zeroing in on the areas that are of most concern to you, that are doing particularly badly compared to others, can be difficult. Nevertheless, we can see here, for example, that this task has slipped against the baseline. Not only that, progress is not where it should be. Today, for the sake of this particular project schedule, is May the 18th. So we should be much further ahead. In fact, this task should have finished by now. On the other hand, we have some tasks over here, which, although they have slipped against the baseline, progress is ahead of schedule on the current plan. So we have a mixture of good and bad news. But as I mentioned, far from easy to zoom in on those areas that are of most interest to you. However, with graphical indicators, we can facilitate that process. Here, for example, is an indicator that I've created called baseline variants, and we'll see in a minute how we create these indicators. However, this one quickly shows us those circumstances where we've slipped against the baseline. Here we've slipped by more than 20%, here we've slipped but by less than 20%, and the green ones at the top show that we're on schedule. Let's look at another indicator here. This one illustrates the circumstance where we have variance against our percent complete. And specifically what I'm doing is showing a red flag if percent complete is less than it should be. So this task here is doubly bad because it's bad in both respects. However, it may be that not all the tasks are of equal significance to us. There may be particular tasks in here that we're really concerned about. And so a project manager can go in and flag tasks as key tasks using another type of indicator here, an indicator that they set. Let's say that they want to now make this task here a key task. They just click, drop down and select yes. And now that task will also show as a key task. One other type of indicator here that I'd like to show you before we see how we create them. This one here is a confidence level indicator. Again, a project manager can go in and set their assessment of their confidence on that task. Let's make this one medium confidence as opposed to high. And so we can see, for example, that this task here that we looked at before that was bad in terms of percent complete uh, and against the baseline, rightly, the project manager has pretty low confidence on that task. On the other hand, they could look at this one now and say, well, you know what, even though it's bad, I think I can do better in the future. So I'm going to set this one as medium confidence. So a variety of indicators and a word of warning for you. You'll see on the left, it now looks a bit like a Christmas tree, almost as complicated with the indicators as it was when we were just looking at the bars. So please be judicious when selecting indicators. Just choose one or two that make sense for you in your project schedule. So how do we go about creating these? The first thing we do is we insert one of the existing fields. And you can always insert a field by right-clicking, clicking Insert Column, and then choose one of the many fields that are available. And if you're going to customize, then choose maybe one of the number fields, text fields. Once it's inserted, you can then customize the field. So let's assume in this case, we had, uh, that, and what I did there was I right clicked. Now I'm clicking customize fields. The field that we inserted was text 30. So what we do first is we rename it to be baseline variance. Then we go in and create a formula. And here's the formula for this field. And this one is pretty complicated. You can find very easy formulas. If you need help with formulas, just go off to Google, type in Microsoft Project Formulas. You'll get a lot of help. 
you'll get instructions, you'll get some examples that you can just paste straight in here. You don't have to remember the syntax for these formulas, you can use these uh, function keys, you can drop down and choose one of the more complicated functions, you can use simple arithmetic functions just by clicking and it'll insert it into the uh, screen area here for you. Note that what this formula is doing, basically it's returning values. If a task isn't baselined, it's telling me that, it's returning the value not baselined. If it's on schedule, again, it's returning a text string to that effect. If the task is a task which actually has a duration, then it will calculate whether it's less than 20% complete, uh, late rather, more than 20% late. If it's a milestone task, in other words, one with zero duration, then we can't really do a percentage, so it returns strings such as more than five days late. All well and good. We get values returned from the formula. What do we do with them? What we do is we go down here to graphical indicators and we select indicators that we want to represent various conditions returned from the formula. When it returns not baselined, I'm saying I would like a white ball indicator here. And I choose that from the list of the indicators available to me. And you'll see I have a variety of shapes and, and symbols, including black and white indicators, in case you have people that are going to look at your Gantt charts who are colorblind, for example. And as we go down here, you'll see the other indicators I chose for the various things that can be returned by that formula. So there we have an indicator based on a formula. The next one is also based on a formula. These two here are based on input tables. As you saw, I can choose a value here. So again, let's right click on that, click on Customize Fields, and look at what we did. This is the confidence level field. We chose text 27 and renamed it. But in this case, instead of using a formula, we have a lookup table. Let's look at the values. Not surprisingly, high, medium, and low. We'll close down there. And let's look at what we do with the graphical indicators. Very straightforward in this case. We simply choose indicators to represent each of those conditions. So in a nutshell, that's graphical indicators for you. I think you'll agree that they can be helpful. But as I said before, please don't get carried away with them. I would strongly suggest maybe just one or two indicators in each schedule here. Maybe just these two. Maybe just one. So what I'd like to do now is go back to my uh, little slideshow here. I'd like to thank you for watching today. I'd also like to ask you to go to my sponsor, Westall Murray International. It's a project management services and consulting company. They have a lot of expertise in Microsoft Project. They also have a fair number of innovative solutions to project management that you can take a look at. And not least, you can read there all about Sir Gantelot and how I became Sir Gantelot in the first place. So again, many thanks for your attention today. Please do check back, look at other YouTube videos here. It's been a pleasure talking to you, and I hope to see you again on another occasion. Thank you very much.